Thank you. And uh, well, thanks for having me. Uh, it's really exciting to be here. Uh, I'd like to start off by having everybody think of a, a moment where they've taken a picture and they were super excited about the moment and they want to share it with somebody. It could be the first steps of your daughter that you want to share with your parents to keep them in the loop. It could be a recent vacation that you want to share on Instagram to keep your friends in the loop, or a design that you've made that you want to show new clients to complete a sale. So everybody pulls out their phone these days or goes to their computer and looks for those photos in that moment. And this is something that you would see. Uh, these are actually my personal photos. It's random. There's no good way to organize them other than time and maybe GPS. And we're looking to change that at not only the scale of your pocket, but the scale of the web. So the best way to explain what we do is to show you a demo. And this is freely available on our website for you to try out with your own images on your own time. If you just drop an image into the demo, it automatically understands what's in it and tells you in plain English uh, what are the most related keywords that are associated with this image. So the image I uploaded was on the left-hand side, and these are the 10 uh, most related keywords. If I try a more difficult image, same story. It's really understanding that directly from the pixels, no other metadata, no tags associated with the image. It's using machine learning to understand what's happening in the image. And on the right-hand side, we're looking up in real time, out of 1.3 million images, what are the most similar. And this is a high-level similarity. It's not simple pixel matching, which you might be able to get away with with this hard example. It's really understanding the image and understanding a whole corpus of images, such as this, um, where these two images are related by mountain activities in some way. So you couldn't do this by color matching or simple histograms of uh, edges or anything very simple like that. This is using neural networks to really understand what's happening. A few more examples. You can see the speed of it printed out at the bottom. This allows for real-time video as well. Uh, only demo is available. Uh, the only thing in the demo is images right now, but video is coming just down the road. So how does this work? So it's using neural networks. And they look something like this, where the bottom would be the pixels of the image as the input, laid out um, traditionally as two-dimensional uh, grid of pixels. And then there's multiple layers of what are called neurons. And when you present it an image, some of these neurons fire, and some of them don't. And that propagates information up throughout the network, just like how the brain works. It finally makes a prediction, and it tries to match the prediction that a hand-labeled uh, image has, such as a CN Tower or Lamborghini. And when it makes a prediction, it gets an error signal saying, oh, this prediction was wrong, basically random off the start. And it starts correcting itself to learn how to predict what has been labeled in the training set. And it goes through literally millions of images and adapts the parameters in the neural network so that it can take a new image and predict what categories are in it. This training phase takes a matter of days, sometimes weeks, depending on the amount of data you're sending in and how big the model is. And this technology is not new. It's been around since the 80s, uh, pioneered by some of the, the guys on the board here and others. Uh, Jeff Hinton um, from University of Toronto and Yann LeCun from NYU, where I studied. And most of the fundamental principles were defined in the 80s, but the real performance started happening in the last few years. And this was brought about by using GPUs for doing the computation. Just like computer graphics leverages GPUs to push pixels to the screen, we can use them in the other direction and take in lots of pixels to make good predictions. This gives a 30 times speed up overnight, and it really changed the game. We could train on more data, much bigger models, and then all of a sudden, all these fundamental principles from the 80s really perform in real world applications. And the big companies have noticed this. Uh, Google quickly uh, hired Jeff Hinton after some recent results. And the same thing with Facebook. They started up an AI group with Yann LeCun and my PhD advisor, Rob Fergus. So this whole uh, field is called uh, deep learning. And the reason it's called deep is that these neural networks are built much deeper than what I showed on the previous slide. 
they usually have tens to hundreds of layers now. And this allows uh, big breakthroughs in a variety of different fields, not just image recognition. Uh, speech recognition, basically all the Siri um, processing or Android voice recognition is done with neural networks these days. Image recognition, this is what we're doing right now. This is all state-of-the-art um, image recognition. And it really blew, blows away the traditional computer vision approaches, which I'll show in a few slides. Natural language processing, there's been very interesting results understanding written text and the web. And then there's tons of other results, such as medical drug discovery, handwriting recognition, satellite imagery. Uh, the list goes on and on. People are starting to apply neural networks to all these different fields, and there's a huge performance gap. That gap looks something like this for speech recognition. So we're looking at error rates here. Lower is better. And the blue dots are traditional methods, like hidden Markov models and uh, other similar methods. The, blue, or the orange are deep learning methods. And you can see kind of the time horizon around 2009 when GPUs started being used. There started to be an acceleration in terms of the research field and performance with these systems. The same story happened in image recognition a couple of years afterwards. And it's a much uh, bigger problem. The neural networks are a lot more expensive to compute. So as hardware continued to improve, um, and good implementations of these neural networks for images came about, there was a huge gap in performance. That's what's shown between traditional computer vision methods, things like edge detection or color histograms, um, compared to a neural network, which had uh, almost half the error rate. And you can see now, to even be competitive, you have to use neural networks. Um, and Clarify happened to be this result at the bottom. Um, we won the 2013 competition. So compared to these computer vision methods, this is a group out of Toronto that Google quickly acquired. Um, all the computer vision methods, different approaches, all basically yielded the same thing. And this is how it was for several years. And then all of a sudden, neural networks did a step function in terms of performance. Fast forward to 2013 competition, and this is the one we ended up uh, winning. Um, and as a comparison, the previous year results were shown in yellow there. And you can see it's kind of the whole field is accelerating. As soon as that paper came out, everybody here was using neural networks, and the performance continues to increase. So what is this useful for? Well, consumer photos, the example I just mentioned at the start of the talk, we can organize all the photos in your pocket, make them easy to search, easy to share, and easy to consume. Shopping. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just take a picture or find it on the web of something you're interested in buying and find exactly where it is for the cheapest price without having to describe or think of keywords that might find that for you? Same story with stock photography. They are all manually labeled at this point. Uh, people upload images, they want to sell them, and buyers have to figure out what keywords are going to get the images that they want to buy. So we can completely automate that process as well as add moderation to it so that we know that the quality of the images are excellent for the buyers. You can even do brand safety. For advertising, for example, with this news article, you wouldn't want to put a Delta ad next to this type of scenario. And this can be automatically recognized, both as an airplane that had an accident, but even down to the level of the Delta branding on the side of the plane. The other flip side of that scenario is some people like Starbucks, so why don't we target ads directly to them based on what, they, uh, what we understand to be their interests in the pictures they share. And a few different um, areas, satellite imagery. There's a bunch of startups launching new uh, satellites into space and getting real-time data feeds out of uh, satellite imagery. So we can analyze those and keep up with the real-time feeds to provide analytics for farming, um, for hedge funds even, um, and for traffic patterns. And medical imagery, slightly different types of pixels coming in, but it's the same type of network that can learn the mapping between the input to the output. And we can power really powerful search. And I'll jump to a second demo that can show this um, better than any slide can. So 
So now that we've tagged a huge corpus of images, we can now search them. These have been automatically tagged uh, stock photography images. And I just typed in beach, and you get a wide variety of, of content that in the stock photo setting would be tagged with beach. These are not using the stock photo tags. They were trained on stock photography. Uh, the model was trained, but then run over these images, and the predicted tags are what is used in search. So now we can get arbitrarily complex and say, maybe I want beach, um, with sunsets, and palm trees, something like that, to really hone in on what you're looking for. And again, this is done automatically. On, this is 1.3 million images. It takes a matter of minutes to do this. So you can scale this up to billions of images, no problem. And no more manual laboring, no more, um, no more barrier to entry to get your photos on the marketplace and get them up for sale. The other interesting thing we can do, instead of just doing word search, because we know which images are similar, we can actually leverage that to make a really powerful search interface. So maybe we want people sitting in cars. If I just click on that image, we can automatically find people sitting in cars. And this is something that you might try if you think of doing a search on the web right now. You would type in a query, get some results, look at them, and then restart over with a new query. Um, you have to refine this several times to get what you're looking for. Whereas here, you can quickly drive in and find what you're looking for visually. And it's a much more engaging experience, and I often find myself with my personal photos flipping through like this and discovering uh, photos I forgot I've taken. Applying this to the e-commerce setting, you get something like this, where you can search by hat as a query or sweater as a query, as a quick example. Um, so a little bit about us, we're very new, as Matt uh, mentioned. Uh, there's nine of us now, started here in New York after I graduated uh, NYU, doing my PhD. And we got some, uh, some great investors like Google, Qualcomm, and NVIDIA who uh, helped power this uh, technology for us. And the API that we have allows you to use this technology in your applications. So we'd love for you to sign up um, with a newsletter and try it out. Some interesting areas we're, we're broadening the technology in is, is face recognition. We really want to understand uh, about people in the pictures, because that's really relevant for many different applications. It could be their identity, but it could also be uh, less um, other things like age or gender. Uh, video, we've already branched out into video, and it's very exciting to see the technology uh, applied to video. It can run about 10 times faster than real time, it opens up a huge array of new applications, uh, video advertising, brand analytics, or uh, just finding people within the, the long video or brands within the long videos. Um, and that's what the, the next part of our research team is working on. And then we want to branch out into things other than image and video, text and audio. Um, bringing all this information together will make the system more powerful, more intelligent, and it can make better predictions for you. So a little bit about our API. Um, it's up on Amazon. So if you're there, it'll be really quick. Um, otherwise, it's also really quick. And basically, the images take under 100 milliseconds. You saw in the demo, it's around 50 milliseconds. That's the time it takes to go from pixels to predictions of the categories. And you can get out the classifications, but also some similarity metric. So you can do this type of powerful search on your own. So thank you, and I urge you all to sign up. Thank you very much. So, yeah. I'll just ask one question, and then I'll uh, pass it on to those uh, fine folks. Uh, so one of the recurring uh, themes that we've had in this event uh, over, the, over the years, I guess, um, is this question of horizontal technology versus vertical expertise. Um, and you showed a bunch of, of different uh, verticals, but for example, for something like medical, uh, is the claim here that you could apply this fairly quickly, or uh, does it need, do you need a bunch of specialists to come and train the system? 
Um, absolutely, we can apply it quickly to all these different verticals because that's the beauty of neural networks. It's literally taking a pair of inputs and outputs, and they could be anything. Here we've been showing tags, but they could even be uh, a quality prediction, what's a good quality image, a price prediction for a product on eBay or something like that where uh, you don't know what to price it at to start. And it can learn these mappings in arbitrary ways. So the medical uh, domain might not have categories. The image pixels might be different. But it's just learning that mapping. So it's just a matter of getting the data uh, rather than understanding exactly the, the problems that are there. But you still need somebody to say whether the data is. I mean, if you do medical imaging, what, what's, what's, you know, what's a cancerous tumor versus a non-cancerous tumor? Right, yeah. So these models work really well with labeled data. Um, there are approaches where you can train without any labels, um, but the performance is never as good as if you have uh, well-labeled data. So that's, uh, that's a huge benefit if you can get that. Very cool. All right. Do we have questions? One in the back. One here. Do we have anybody with a mic? Can, can you go get on for the next one? I'll, uh, I'll pass on in the meantime. I'm sorry, are those you? Thank you, Matt. Uh, Larry Smith, uh, uh, Thematics. Uh, what I'm curious about uh, in understanding is, is ontology, a structure, semantics, a taxonomy uh, in structuring the images. So I'm looking for stock art where I want a female in the foreground, I want clouds in the background, I want the setting to be in a restaurant. How's the neural network going to do that? So it really understands all these different components in order to make the prediction of the categories. And you can see that it's not even just learning um, objects. It can actually learn things like love and romance, which uh, I think came up with a hard example. Um, I see things like relaxation and fun when people are on the beach. Um, it's learning these concepts that take into account the entire scene and all the objects in it. Um, so that's already being learned. and. Uh, can continue to improve over time. The machines can learn love. <laughs> yes. uh, Carter Schoenwald, uh, in between companies. Um, so are you using this more as a way of just doing more explainable feature extraction, or are you, it's kind of, it almost sounds like you're saying you're using it to do multi-class multi -class prediction, kind of. But I, my understanding with deep learning is it's, in some respects, better to just as a way of giving higher level feature vectors that you can then sort of do more classical methods or explanta explanatory me me mechanisms on top. Uh, yeah, so we're actually doing both, depending on the application. Um, the, the top level of the neural network, if you use it as a classifier, it's really doing um, what traditional classifiers would do, uh, some linear prediction given the features of the neural network. And we can either train that with the neural network or apply an, an off-the-shelf classifier to do that. Um, and in the similarity space, we're actually not using labels at all when we're training that. So it's not doing any classification task. It's really just learning what images are similar. Gustavo and I work for PNG. Um, I have a question for you. So, uh, how are you going to create a revenue from your consumer vertical, and what keeps Google away from using your technology, uh, since they already have a image recognition and some other uh, face, facial recognition and other recognize, <laughs> recognizable features uh, to search for items or any other objects? Yeah, um, so Google, we don't consider them a competitor. They have great research teams and really big um, research teams and great resources. Um, but they're working on their own problems. They have their own users. And they don't, uh, they don't really compete with us in terms of uh, the applications we're doing. On the consumer side, there's a bunch of different ways to, to monetize uh, consumer photos. It could just be advertising. It could be some of the e-commerce applications built on top of recognizing what people are interested in. Um, or selling brand analytics um, to really understand how people are engaging with brands. Right. Time for one more. There was another shunt over there. Okay, so quick question. Since you brought up uh, hold on, hold on. Wait, Mike. Since Google was brought up. Uh, since Google was brought up, just a quick question. Can you recognize cats? 
<laughs> yes. Because <laughs> there were no examples. <laughs> That's an inside joke. Google recognized cats, Google. All right, I think that's uh, all the time we have. You're going to be around for uh, yeah, after around. the event? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you Thank very you. much.